If one was to think of all the countries that are really making strides to changing to fully electric vehicles, then one should really appreciate all the efforts that Namibia is putting in. Hi, my name is Ngendiko Nangola. I'm a learner at Hockland High School. I'm 17 years old and today I'm here to find out how Namibia is really putting in effort to switching to fully economic, environmental, sustainable energy. Hey, hi everyone. Hello, Hello sir. Welcome to UN Namibia. Thank you. My name is Gabriel Dava. I'm the deputy representative of UNDP in Namibia. As you can see next to me, these are 100% electric vehicles. How many of you are seeing electric vehicles for the first time? <laughs> As you can see, they just look like normal vehicles. Mr. Gabriel, what are the expected results of having these vehicles? We are trying to achieve sustainable development goals. Now, to achieve sustainable development goals, we need to take proactive steps. Good morning. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to have you here in the UN House. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for coming this morning. I understand that you're here because you came to learn a little bit about our green energy project. Yes. So who can tell me what are these panels? Solar, solar panels. Indeed, they're solar panels. These were installed back in 2017 and they currently power about 30% of the overall energy consumption in the UN building. Why did you come up with this method? So the idea is that these panels are also going to be used to power the vehicles that we just introduced in the UN building. So why don't you come with me so I can show you these new vehicles that we just bought. Okay. Hi guys, my name is Tewo Shikongo. I'm the Common Service Associate for UNDP. I understand you guys wanted more information on, on the EVs and how the charging system works. Okay, come with me. Here at the UN House, we have installed two um, charging units. Now, these charging units are equipped with a smart technology called V2G, which basically stands for vehicle to grid. So basically what happens is that when you are charging the car, the car then draws power from the grid and stores it in the battery that is integrated within the car. But also depending on the peak demand, let's say during the day, you need a lot of power, you need a lot of energy, you can then connect the car also to the charging station and the car is then able to pull power from the battery back into the grid, hence V2G. Um, now I want to show you basically how we charge the vehicles. Now the charging section is actually positioned in front of the car um, and it's right here, this section here. Now how you open, you just pop it open from the key. Wow! Yeah, so you lift the lid. Um, then you then, okay, you will see that the, the units, the design and everything else almost looks like your usual fuel-based vehicles, that, I mean systems that you see at the fuel stations, nothing different there. And then you then take this, pop it in here, make sure it's firmly popped in there. Now you will see on the screen it tells you that you must connect the cable to the vehicle, which is exactly what we've done. Then you just press on start. And you hold on a little bit for a few seconds. I want you to look there on the screen, on the windscreen there. See, there it goes. It basically means the vehicle is now charged. Wow. Interesting. Yes, you have a question? Uh, so, do we get to ride in this car? Yeah, sure. Lucky for you, there's one waiting up front. Wow, it's amazing that this car doesn't make any sound. How do you think people will adjust to electric vehicles? It is amazing, really. It's all about uh, changing behavior and getting used to it because once they see there is no sound, no pollution, it's going to be easy. How, do you, how is UNDP working on making other countries um, adopt electric vehicles? UNDP, as part of its work, does a lot of work on uh, 
making access to renewable energy technologies both on grid off grid and uh, we are working in a number of countries across the world uh, for instance china sri lanka and moldova they're all working on these uh, renewable energy solutions so that's what we are doing and we are making uh, access to renewable energy technologies easier so that there is more investment also coming wow. in um, saying that UNDP is a big player in environmental protection and promotion of renewable energy, how um, within the United Nations systems does UNDP ensure that other agencies uh, follow suit with this? Uh, UNDP is the integrator of the SDGs and we are carrying the message of connecting the dots amongst all the SDGs. So we are promoting and advocating for integrated programming. So if it's about education, how can you twin renewable energy to promoting education, to having good infrastructure, facility, educational facilities and health facilities? Well, this is all so interesting. How do you think us as youth can get involved? Youth have a very important role to play. First, by walking the talk, getting aware, and even by taking the small actions yourself, like switching off your lights, cycling to your school, that would be really effective. This, this was such an informative session for us. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Ruth. Um, the UN in Namibia is keeping abreast with technology. The world has gone digital. And we know that um, electricity is now everywhere. The Africa enjoys the sunshine, and so it is important that we maximize on the resources that are available in the continent. And hence, we decided that the best use of this natural resource is to get a vehicle that is able to take people places. We as a Hockland High group, we just like to thank the entire UN organization for bringing us here, for inviting us, for allowing us to see the electric vehicles, for allowing us to test them, for allowing us to see how they work, how they help conserve the environment and to keep the environment healthy. And we just like to thank you because we we'll take this and incorporate it in our everyday lives as the youth. Thank you.